a government agent, and a little robot girl on a road trip for a post-apocalyptic war in order to find the creator, an AI who has developed a mysterious weapon with the power to end wars. Um, not bad. Um, could have been better. Um, could have had something original. Um. Director Gareth Edwards actually flat out gave a list of movies that inspired the creator, and this is the rare case where that was such a bad idea, because the story and visuals in this will remind you of so many better movies. Take his list for example, Apocalypse Now, Blade Runner, Acura, Rain Man, E.T., Paper Moon, Baraka. Personally, I would add District 9, Logan, Kundun, Alien, Bridge on the River Kwai, Ex Machina, AI, Rogue One, ironically, and don't get me wrong, some of these movies did borrow from others, even ones that are on this very list, but they at least gave fleshed out characters and story beats that felt fresh and original. The only thing fresh about the creator is how it's filmed compared to most Hollywood blockbusters these days. Visually speaking, this may be Edwards' best looking movie, and I feel weird saying that because I never had a moment where I had to take a deep breath to appreciate how massive in scope each setting looked, or was even that blown away by the special effects, but every scene in this movie has something about it that was done for real. Actual locations, practical sets and sound stages, as opposed to just standing in front of a random green screen, was so refreshing, and it made a huge difference to see on the big screen. You know you're looking at CGI with the simulants because there's just no other way, but like Ex Machina, what you know is impossible looks as real as anything else. And speaking of looking real, this took me off guard with how gritty all the action scenes were, where there wasn't any choreographed hand-to-hand -hand combat, mostly aiming and shooting, lots of explosions from grenades or missiles, and always using handheld camera work to feel as if you're a fly on the wall, and originally I didn't like that. I prefer sci-fi movies that are more fantastical with the action, but it's how genuine the technology, weapons, and military tactics the characters use that once again puts you in a battlefield alongside everyone else. The major downside to that is the lighting, especially at night, is so poorly done that there are key moments where you can barely see people's faces, let alone who's shooting at who. Even when there isn't an action sequence, Ralph Innocent is one of the villains in this, and while I knew it was him, I couldn't tell for sure because his face was constantly covered in shadow, and not in a stylish, sinister way. It was actually pretty ugly and distracting. I think some scenes were trying to have a Blade Runner noir look to it, but... At least Blade Runner, and Blade Runner 2049 especially, acknowledge that noir isn't really a gritty or realistic thing to do. It has to have some sort of style or fantastical element, which is not what the creator is trying to be, so it doesn't really mesh. And I will say, the imagery of destruction ranging from explosions in forests destroying nature, women and kids crying at the sight of carnage, and enemy soldiers being derogatory towards hostages, it kind of got on my nerves every once in a while. It's not Avatar-level ham-fisted, but like other movies in this nature, it acts like we haven't seen or heard of real-life incidents like this before. And while the themes and mythology surrounding AI isn't anything brand new, there are variations to vehicles, weapons, and different forms of robotics where the smallest creative choice makes enough of a difference for it to feel new. I do appreciate that humanity and AI are equally held to their pros and cons, where humans have legit reasons to fear or hate the way robotics can control things or events in a way humans can't, whether they be weapons or espionage, while unironically using their own robotic devices to battle AI, compared to the simulants, who are clearly shown to be individual from one another, have emotions and morals that are just as gray as humanity, since they're more than willing to put others in danger against their will under the disguise of being for the greater good. Also, there's just something for lack of a better term, cool about robots being part of Buddhist religion, where they're wearing the orange robes in the way where they're monks, there are statues of them being worshipped alongside other humans. It was surprisingly refreshing how integral they were to religion in this. I kind of like that. All the characters are blank slates, with extremely short, standard, minute-long backstories where they all lost loved ones to the other side. 
we never see, never know, therefore never care about them. Even when we do, there's not enough to care. But I'll get to that later. That being said, the level of commitment all the actors have to their characters and their performances, especially John David Washington and Madeleine Una Voiles, is the reason you feel for them and their struggles. I didn't believe the chemistry between Joshua and Alfie from a family perspective, but Washington and Voiles work well individually and play off each other pretty well as if they're part of a team. But because so much of this movie rests on their shoulders alone, so many talented actors like Allison Janney, Ralph Ineson, and especially Ken Watanabe are all criminally wasted potential, and at a given point, I kept forgetting they were even in the movie with the uneven amount of screen time they all have. Edwards always seems to make movies where the characters are so simplistic that the audience can imagine themselves as these people, which sounds good on paper, and it's a change of pace for movies where you have to be in a certain demographic to fucking enjoy it, but what makes a great character is the ability to put yourself in someone's shoes who isn't you. Take Lena Saberwang as my favorite example. I'm not a girl, I've never been homeless, or in an abusive relationship. But I've been in a position where I felt alone and afraid to ask for help out of shame or fear that nothing would improve. We all have. We've all been in a dilemma where you either help yourself or others, and regardless of what decision you make, there are going to be life-changing consequences. The more specific we are in a situation, the more universal the feeling can have. The specificity of it is what resonates. Fucking try that sometime, you dickheads. There's one character technically given a free act character arc played by Gemma Chen, and I can't say too much because A, that'd be giving it away, and B, honestly, there still isn't that much to talk about. Almost all of her scenes are in these Terrence Malick-style flashbacks that are trying to resemble Baraka, I get it, but the other effect wears off, and if you're long-time viewers, you may know that I find that kind of narrative-style pretentious and pseudo-intellectual, it's not show-don't-tell because there's narration to fill you in on what they don't show, and what we do see is, again, so generalized and surface level that it doesn't really explain who she is as a person or the connection she has to John David Washington or Madeleine Voiles. Also, to my fellow guys out there who find her so damn hot, what am I missing? She's not unattractive or anything, I just don't see what all the hubba hubba's for. And lastly, because this movie has such a gritty, somber, and serious tone to it, I feel like there were studio notes given that there had to be these moments of Marvel-style comedy that just, once again, like the lighting, don't gel with the, with the rest of the film. And that's not to say there aren't any funny moments whatsoever. There's one where a dog grabs a grenade and you think that's going to be super morbid, but then... The dog plants the grenade on the opposing side, and it was funny. And if there were more moments like that where they took chances with the humor, it would have worked. But it's a lot of cheap, standard one-liners that just didn't do it for me. The script for this was co-written by Chris Weitz, and for all I know, that could have been his input. So yeah, in the very end, the creator is technically a mixed bag, but because the visuals are more real than most, the action is exhilarating and the actors do everything they can to elevate the material they're given. I enjoyed myself. It'll hit hard as seeing in theaters, because if you watch it for the first time on streaming, nothing's going to phase you. It'll just be another sci-fi movie. So if you get a chance, go see it on the big screen. It'll be worth the 10 bucks. You may or may not forget it, and... Eh, I'm okay with that. Namaste, motherfuckers.